end up giving Alan a haircut that resembles uh, Richard Simmons. <laughs> Had to get his curls out of his eyes and I just kind of kept shaving up and up and up. <laughs> About two months ago, I ordered two knives. I was after the the rat number two of the day. You know, the, the newest cost-effective knife that anyone can pick up and just use and have a good old time with. A quality piece that isn't cheap feeling, but isn't quite at the level of like, well, for example, uh, the paramilitary two or, or this little lion still here. Something that was a bit more affordable, now, I wouldn't quite say budget anymore. And in my mind, in Australia, over $100 on a knife is still a bit more money than I'd be happy to say as a budget purchase. Uh, and that, to you uh, American friends, is probably about $70 in terms of just the math, how it breaks down, and probably about like $60 of actual wealth, like how much $60 means to you on a day-to-day -day in terms of what it can get you. It's about what 100 Australian dollars is, from what I can tell. So these are both just on or slightly over that mark, but they are sort of, um, compared to a lot of other knives, about half the price of something that is either made in America or made in Italy or with a higher end steel or whatever. So first up was the Civivi Vision FG. Uh, this is a really nice knife, but my testing regime uh, made it you know, somewhat unusable. I, I went that little bit extra f further and uh, did a little bit of light wood splitting on it. And uh, it did make the very nicely ground blade uh, quite ripply. And now it is sort of like a, um, well, a bit like something you'd prepare exotic fruit dishes with instead of a, a pocket knife. But still stand by a really, really good knife unless you use it to the nth degree like I did. But we're not here to review Civivi knives. We're looking today at this Vosteed. So this Vosteed was the other one. It's slightly cheaper than the Civivi and it is in 14C28N. Now Vosteed, from what I can tell, are a pair of American chaps who have a lot of designs and they get those designs made by an OEM in China. And I'm not the OEM whisperer. I can't do like a, a knife mind meld and, and d divine where these things are made, but it feels very similar to like a, a QSP or like a, 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 a Rook or remember that knife brand, Rake, Rook, Rookie. Do they still exist? I don't know. But it feels kind of along those lines. Uh, like the hardware is sort of the same, the, the, you know, the screws and the, the clips especially all seems to come from a, a similar pool of production. It's you know, not a bad thing, it's just sort of how it feels. It definitely doesn't feel like it's made by Rayat or by Wii. It's, you know, that you know, mid mid quality tier, which is still very, very you know, nice and everything works well. Gone are the days where you'd get knives that didn't fly open when you flicked them from China. Like it's just, it's come so far um, in the last 10 years, especially. So that's what we're looking at today. A knife that's made overseas, uh, designed by a pair of American lads who you can find on Instagram, both together as Vosteed and uniquely as their, as their own, um, own endeavors and ventures. So the Vosteed's available in Australia for just under $100 most places I look, and it's available in America at places like Knife Center for $60 for this configuration, uh, button lock, um, micarta handles, or $65 for a version in Nitro V, which is a steel that is very, very similar to 14C28N, which is what this one is in, and something that I'll be surprised if the end user noticed a difference between the two day to day. But if you are like a stats-based um, 
you know, eccentric, uh, overly focused uh, performance minded weirdo like I am, then yeah, it may be that little, you know, bit extra give you a nudge over the line. Maybe you'll equate that with 20 extra cuts through rope like I probably like I just can't help doing and uh, spring for that one. But either way, I've been very happy with the 14C28N. What I will say though is uh, in a rust test between this and the Vision FG and a number of other knives, this 14C28 did seem to... Um, Resist rust a little less good than the Nitro V on the Civivi, although the Nitro V on the Civivi uh, struggled to resist uh, heavy redwood. So <laughs> maybe strengths and weaknesses, swings and roundabouts, and all of that. Uh, so yeah, those are the options available to you. Now, in the course of my use, I sort of just used it very generally in terms of pretty much whatever I could force it into. I would use it for so not all these things were knife tasks it was you know going through opening bags of stuff cutting through things i think at, at one point i even used it to pry the service port open on my septic tank so it definitely had a a colorful uh, array of uses been put through in the last month or so and it's held up really really well apart from what you probably noticed before the clip just caught on something at some point and just bent out so horribly that uh, it was ruined and you know i could have really I could have took it, taken it to the anvil and you know really tried to muck around with it, but what I ended up doing was because the vision uh, is you know virtually not use of use to me anymore, and I've tried a few different means of straightening that out, but I haven't been able to. Uh, I've just taken the vision pocket clip, which fit this one fairly well and did just fine. Uh, the use required two different sharpenings over the month. Uh, I just used both on my my bench stones, and that just got good serviceable, you know. Uh, 800 grit edge with some strop back on just using my Spyderco CBN stone on one and I think just using my um, my normal stones. Now, I think I used the CBN on both times actually because I was just after a quick effective sharpen which is certainly what it got. Um, what I will do at the end of this video is I'm going to sharpen it on the new KME and really give it a, a great edge or like a, the best edge I can and see what the upper limits are of it holding an edge at 17 degrees per side. But uh, yeah, look, overall, over the time that I was using it, it performed great. And it really is like a pretty bomb-proof feeling knife. Even though the lock isn't like a triad lock or anything super intense, it truly is just a liner lock, which is operated from the rear. Uh, you know, something of a cross between a liner and a compression lock, I suppose. But uh, in, in action, it just feels like a, a button-locked, liner lock type thing. Pretty nice, and that absolutely has held up fine, even in the more sort of rugged use. There's a little bit of side-to-side -side play, which I probably could uh, iron out with a bit of pivot manipulation there. But look, overall, uh, a really, really good working using knife that, owing to that price factor, you're never too bothered to go and put in the filth. Uh, you know, even for me, I'll get a, you know, some knives I'll just relegate to being users, but like, so even this Stretch 2 from Spyderco, this is like a $240 knife in Australia. It's in the K390, so it's a slightly nicer steel. I sort of had to make a mental affordation that, yeah, this is going to be a beater knife and it's going to end up looking scabby and horrible and I'm going to just sharpen it in all different sorts of ways. And it's just going to, it's going to live a very rich life, but maybe a shorter life. And so I need to really make peace with those when I do that to a knife that's, say, over $200. But uh, when you get something that's about 100 bucks, I'm pretty happy to just go, let's just see how long it lasts. And it's still lasting really, really long. And it's cool that that pocket clip just sort of fit straight on there and back into the rotation it goes. Uh, the steel has got some tarnishing that I haven't been able to get off with like normal means. I could probably take it off with some, with some mild sandpaper or something, wouldn't be a problem. But um, overall, there's no real issues or tarnishings or you know hiccups. Even the blade never really chipped out or rolled out on me too bad. It just kind of became gradually dull, and that's through cutting, you know, through basically dirt and things like that that are in the bags of compost and cow manure and things that I'm often working with here. Uh, I did some light limbing on some trees. I scraped out some um, some gall wasps that live on my citrus plants out of the knuckles of the trees. There did fine on that as well. So look, overall, it's just done great, and it is a really really recommendable basic knife. The thing you're gonna have with these knives is that they all just do feel so generic and disposable. And it reminds me a lot of another great knife, which is the QSP Parrot, I think it is, or Puffin, whichever one I've had before. Uh, it was the Warncliffe one. And you know, 
in hand and objectively speaking, it's really, really good. It's good knife technology, but just something about it doesn't quite ring as true to me as like something that is made, you know, with a little bit, I don't know. I think it's just the, the amount of knives these companies are putting out. It's just hard to keep track of what is what. They don't feel like events as much. And it's just, I suppose it's pretty, it's a pretty hollow critique. It's not really meaningful in terms of how the knife's gonna act in your hand, but it's just a bit of a perception I have with these sort of micro brands that spring up release like a bunch of knives that still in a way do feel like those uh, rook, rook knives from 15 years ago. All the hardware feels very similar. Uh, all the machining feels very similar. It's just sort of a, a now kind of the cookie cutter. And this is definitely the cookie cutter of a good $100 knife now. They're all going to be a bit like this. Uh, all the good ones anyway, which is still a good thing. I'm saying these are good knives, but just as a knife collector and enjoyer, they are just definitely felt like they're all going to end up in a drawer at some point when the next slightly better one of this comes along. Whereas something about like the stretch just sort of keeps me coming back. It's different enough. Nothing else is really like this apart from other spider case. And uh, to me, that's what makes this more of a favorite even still than something like this. But you know what? It's all getting a bit abstract now with the critiques because what is really the case is that it's a very well-performing knife. It's got a good blade. It's got a good lock. It's got a fine steel for $100. It's nice to see my Carter getting around on handle scales a bit more uh, than it used to. It's um, li It's got liners in it, so it is going to be you know a little bit more uh, durable to the squeeze and whatnot. The actions are great. The pocket clip, while it bended, is going to swap out with basically any other Chinese company's pocket clips because most of them have about the same screw placement and architecture and, and everything in terms of that. And yeah, look, overall, it's just a really highly competent user basic knife. So I would certainly recommend it if you're after something that's just going to scratch a knife buying itch for a month or so, or if you are after just a truly good basic knife for someone as a gift that you don't want to spend more than 100 Australian or 60 US dollars on. So definitely gets a thumbs up just with a few little, little, little wobbles towards the end, and just for stuff that's not really important, but hey, you, you listened to me for my, my entire thoughts on knives, and so I thought I'd share absolutely all of them. So there we are. Let's finish off with another little steel test. Raining, still no microphone, sorry. 300 times on the Hussa uh, Sissel rope. It's absolutely fine for a steel of this caliber. So no worries at all on the edge test result. That's the video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.